All right, here I'm going to take you through the steps for creating a, a simple Coco Lotto application. So here's what the running version of it looks like. Very simple application. Everything is created with stock components. So the idea is you've got six lucky numbers that represent your six ping pong balls that will be selected during the lotto. And so the idea is if you hit the big pick button, you get four or six new unique lucky numbers, right? And you can go win the lottery. Or So the big pick button selects all six new numbers. And if I select on an individual button, it just changes that particular number. And some lottos use 49 ping, ball, ping pong balls. Some use 56. So... This wonderful application allows you to work with either kind of lotto system. Of course, if it changes, it needs to pick a new set of lotto numbers. So here I'm going to pick numbers between 1 and 56. Of course, they're all unique. And if I pick one, 49, they'll be between 1 and 49. So anyway, so that's, that's it. That's our working application. Um, we could add some menu items and stuff to it, but let's just focus on that part of it. And... Just to show you um, the, the, the software model that we'll be using that pervades all of Apple stuff and perhaps, and actually any good UI code follows what's called the MVC or the model view controller, meaning all the entities in our software can be placed in one of three categories or either model objects, view objects, well, and there are controller objects. So view objects are probably the easiest to understand. Those are all of our buttons and menus and all the sorts of stuff that, that, are, that are on screen typically and represent user interface components. Right? The model, model elements are, are the parts of our code that just represent the internal business logic um, the, and our user interface agnostic. right? And so... The, the big idea is to separate and completely decouple model elements from view elements. And so if you've written your program so that your model elements are completely decoupled from your view objects, then the idea is you could wrap a different user interface so on it and without changing any of your model logic. So your model logic doesn't even know anything about the user interface, right? Where your view is your particular... The, elements that make up your particular interface, right? And so then the the other component here is our controller objects. Controller objects act as mediators between the model and the view. So so the model and the view generally communicate between each other by talking to the controller. Now in many cases we sort of break the strict model. We allow sometimes we'll allow the view to talk directly to the model. Probably the, the biggest thing that we never allow is we never allow the model to talk to the view. The, the model doesn't know anything about the view. Um, and if we were really being curious about this, we, the view wouldn't talk to the model either. So, but anyway, this is sort of the model that we're going to use. So I'm going to create this application in, in several stages. And so I'm going to start by creating a new, new Cocoa application, and we're going to create the, the view elements. So we're going to use the Interface Builders tools and Xcodes to create the view elements. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and start with that. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and fire up, fire up Xcode. And I'm going to create a new project. And I'm, make sure you choose a Mac OS X Cocoa application. Yeah, make sure you. Not, this is going to be an application for, for a desktop computer running Mac OS X. It's going to be a Cocoa application. These these up here, these templates will be used for um, iPhone and iPad. So this is so make sure you choose application under Cocoa application. Choose next, and I'll call I'll call this uh, Lotto class prefix. I'll pick Lotto and make sure that the only thing you have checked here is automatic reference counting. So we're going to be using automatic reference counting for our memory management. No, make sure you don't have core data checked. We're not using core data. And this program is small enough. We don't need to do any unit testing. And you know you can type in whatever you want for your company identifier. 
right? So, so we'll go ahead and create this. I'm going to go ahead and just pop this one on my desktop. Now, down here you'll have a checkbox whether you want to have it to create a, a Git repository for you. I'm going to leave this unchecked for now and probably make my own Git repository later. So I'll go ahead and create. And so here we've got Xcode up and running with our new bear project. You can see over on the left we'll have sort of a hierarchical view of all the files and various entities in the application bundle. And in the middle we'll have our editor view and depending on what's selected over here you'll see the editor view will change. If we select source code you'll see that you'll see the source code. If you, and if you see the, uh, a nib file that's going to bring up the nib file editor which we call interface builder and you're going to see over here on the right you're going to have what's called the inspector which sort of takes on a different view depending on what we're doing. So those are sort of the main three components. So for this application we were going to start by by creating our view objects. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually create our view objects and archive them in what's called a nib file. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, main menu zib here, which is the XML version of the nib file. And you're going to see that pops up interface builder, which is the tool for editing nib files. And so what we're going to do is just visually lay out our program. And um, so in our nib, you're going to see over here we sort of get a hierarchical view of all the entities that are in the nib file. So you can see right now main menu is selected, and so you get the um, menu up here. And if I select window, you can see this is the window. And, that, and of course I could select other entities here as well that are in the nib file. Um, so the nib file is going to contain a serialized version of of all the objects that we're going to place in our view. So what we're actually going to do is create instances of view objects and place them in the nib file. And that's actually these instances, you can kind of think of them as freeze-dried components that will be just stored in the nib file. And then when the application starts, these will be deserialized, reanimated, and brought to life. So we can actually create instances, place them in our view, and then these will become reanimated when our application starts. So that's where we're going to start by creating our view items. Um, a few other things over here. You'll notice also that there's a class already created for our, for our app delegate, which is great. Um, and you'll, you'll see that there's like, in our app delegate, you notice there's a hook for um, whenever the application finishes launching, you can do extra initialization code there. And um, so, it kind of, so the template gives you sort of a really simplistic, bare, version of, of, the, of the application delegate. And so right now everything's sort of in the nib file and that's where we're going to get started. So that's sort of the overview. So I'm going to, since I can't really make these videos very long, I'm going to go ahead and just stop this video here and in the next video I'll, we'll work on the view components, user interface elements.